solar panels work thank you to what is known as the photoelectric effect, which is essentially a property exhibited by certain materials that causes them to absorb electromagnetic radiation, such as solar energy, whether in the form of infrared, visible or ultraviolet light, and release electrons consequently. When these are captured, we are talking about a photovoltaic effect, that is, light is converted directly into electricity. The photoelectric effect was first observed by the French physicist Alexandre Edmond Becquerel in 1839, who found that some materials produced electric sparks when exposed to light. It wasn't until 1883, however, that American Charles Fritz manufactured the first solar cell, covering the semiconductor material selenium with an extremely thin layer of gold. The efficiency of the device, that is, the percentage of light that is converted into electricity, was just 1%, so it was never put to practical use. It took more than 50 years for Bell Laboratories' American engineer, Russell Shoemaker Old, to accidentally discover the first modern solar cell in 1940, using silicon, while participating in research that would eventually culminate with the invention of the transistor. 14 years later, in 1954, engineer Daryl Chapin, chemist Calvin Fuller, and physicist Gerald Pearson, also of Bell Laboratories, succeeded in developing the first practical solar cell, which, with an efficiency of 6%, surpassed by far any previous alternative. The first solar cells were expensive to produce, and efforts to market them were not very successful. However, a few years later, solar cells were commonly used to power satellites and other subsequent applications. Now let's see more in detail how the photoelectric effect works and what a solar cell is composed of. The electrons surrounding an atom are grouped into regions of bands defined by the energy level of each one of them. The so-called valence band is the one with the highest energy and the last one in which electrons orbit. The next band is the conduction band, and the difference in energy between this and the valence band determines the level of conductivity of a material. In a typical conductor, such as a metal, the valence band is even overlapped with the conduction band, so electrons can easily move from one atom to another at any time. On the contrary, in a good insulating material, the energy difference between the valence band and the conduction band is very large, and electrons have very little mobility. In the case of semiconductor materials, there is also an energy gap between the valence band and the conduction band, but unlike insulators, it is very low. For silicon, this energy is 1.12 electron volts, which is in the range carried by the photons or packages into which sunlight is divided. When the silicon electrons come into contact with the photons, they jump to the conduction band when absorbing their energy, thus generating an electric current. A solar cell basically consists of two layers of the same semiconductor material, often silicon crystals, to one of which impurities of another material or element, such as boron, are added, forming a positive charge layer with fewer free electrons, and impurities of different material or element, such as phosphorus, are added to the other, resulting in a negatively charged layer with more free electrons. These two layers form the so-called p-n junction and operate in a certain way as a magnetic field, facilitating the movement in a given direction of the electrons released by the absorption of solar energy. The solar cells have various connectors to collect the electricity generated, and are covered by an ultra-reflective layer, which allows the absorption of as much sunlight as possible and the transparent glass to prevent damage. These are not used in isolation, but are connected to each other and mounted on a structure or frame and are referred to, collectively, as a solar panel or photovoltaic module. Panels are designed to provide electricity at a certain voltage. The current produced depends directly on how much light impacts the module. Multiple modules or panels can be connected together to form an array to generate more electricity in total. One important thing to mention about solar cells is that they produce direct current, that is, like the one provided by a AA battery, which is fine for simple and small applications such as a pocket calculator. 
However, in order to provide electricity to a house or something larger, it is necessary to have alternating current, such as the one sent to us by our electric company, and with which we feed all the devices we connect to the wall outlets. That is why, in order to take advantage of a solar panel in this way, it is necessary to have another fundamental component, which is the inverter, which performs precisely the function of converting direct current into alternating current so that the electrical energy that is generated can be used in homes, industry, etc. In addition, when it comes to installing the solar panels, it is also necessary a mechanism for mounting them. This normally consists of aluminum or steel rails with a support for every 100 watts of panels, when it comes to roofs, or a larger, more solid base with posts and concrete foundation when it comes to placing them at the floor level. Today, however, there are also simpler and less cumbersome options, such as solar panels in the form of tiles, which can be installed very easily. Depending on everyone's needs, a solar panel installation can be connected to a battery system, for which a charge controller or regulator is necessary, which helps give it stability, prevents overcharging and damage to the batteries. Now let's talk about some of the advantages of solar panels. On the one hand, they operate on the basis of a renewable energy, and in practical terms, inexhaustible. On the other hand, the energy they produce is totally clean, as it does not emit any type of polluting substance into the atmosphere. Although the initial investment is large, they have a very low cost of subsequent operation and have a projected useful life of about 25 years, although it is usually longer, resulting in long-term savings over the direct energy consumption of the electricity grid. In addition to the aforementioned, they can be installed relatively easily and in a number of different and, above all, isolated places. In particular, desert areas in which the impact on the environment is minimal and its use maximum. Another positive thing is that once the different electricity companies in the world upgrade to smarter meters, those who have solar panels will have the possibility of receiving additional income or savings from those companies for the excess energy that each house or installation generates when connected to the local electricity grid. Unfortunately, not everything is positive as far as solar panels are concerned. To begin with, its performance is tied entirely to the amount of sunlight available, meaning that it will be affected by changes in weather. Moreover, at night, it will be necessary to use the energy of the traditional electrical network or to have a system of batteries that are charged throughout the day, which represents an additional expense. Also, the more energy you want to generate, the more space that will be required, which is eventually limiting, especially if you want to install on roofs, where you receive a greater amount of sunlight. Finally, some toxic and hazardous materials used during manufacture might have indirect effects on the environment. And some of their components, due to equally toxic or carcinogenic characteristics, may constitute a problem once their useful life ends. According to the Environmental Progress Organization, each solar panel creates about 300 times more toxic waste per unit of electricity generated than a nuclear power plant. While a large part of a solar panel can be recycled, the cost of doing so is very high, and the process is complex, and it seems that only Europe has done something about it. It is estimated that by 2050 there will be around 60 million tons of solar panel waste if no action is taken. If the use of this technology is to be extended much further, it must be done following a plan and guidelines that take into account all the factors mentioned before, so that in the end it is a solution and does not become a bigger problem in 20, 30 or 40 years. If you like this video, please share it with your friends and family and subscribe to our channel so we can do more like this one. Thank you very much.